YouTube, this is Mike from Tiny Boat Nation. Today I have a pretty good video. I think it's a video of massive frustration and also a video of massive success. It's it's a big, big moment and I'm glad I can share it with you guys. Check it out. Alright guys, so I do my leak test and everything performs great except for the back. I left the back alone because I knew there was some nonsense. I didn't paint it because I knew there was some nonsense going on here. And so, aside from the broken rivets, which is whatever it is, the seam down here is busted and cracked and then slight cracks all the way and then another big huge crack down here. Well, it's not huge. I mean, well, it's, it's, it's pretty big. It's in need of repair. And then I left it alone because I don't know if you can see all that, but it's just... It's just nonsense. I don't know what this guy was doing or what he thought he was doing to repair it. I mean, there was some kind of thing done. There was some angled, I think that's aluminum in there. I'm hoping that's aluminum. And then there's these bolts. Ultimately, what's going to happen is I'm going to have to cut and just repair the back transom. The rest of the boat came out pretty good. I just leak tested it. I had a few small leaks where there's areas, I mean, where just water was just kind of creeping through. But those are going to be easily fixed. Those aren't hard to fix at all because the major the major part of it was repaired. The back though is its own freaking animal and so that sucks. So this is the nonsense. Oh man. It's so bad. I'm going to have to... <clears throat> this guy is a serious toolbox of a person. The freaking hole there. What this joker thought he did to clean it up. You know, previous owner of this boat, karma comes around. Karma comes around. one side too it's just the, the freaking whole rest of it is correct not that bad but it's still pretty bad I mean at least he tried to aluminum <laughs> I don't know I don't know what to do about this well I do but it just sucks I'm gonna fix it right now though for sure all right guys so here I really sanded away with a wire brush all the oxidation and the contaminants and all that bondo and whatever he used to seal it there gone and so Right here, I heated it up with a torch and, you know, the aluminum started to really bend. It really started to expose how bad of a gap there actually was. And when the aluminum was hot enough, I pushed up with a hammer and I pushed it flush. And then I was able to uh, really, really clump in the uh, brazing material. And um, that's what the, the finished product looked like. And I, <clears throat> I really was a lot of rods, like two rods I wasted trying to get that through until I figured out I could just bend the aluminum once it started to flare up when it got heated because it's going to contract and expand but it was pretty awesome this guy i mean he did use some brackets on some parts of the weld on the seam where it went but that was the end result because whatever he tried to preserve it with i think that's bondo it was just crap it just it didn't seal anything so i spent forever trying to get that up that was a huge tedious process that took hours hours of time and there was just a really really bad heinous gap that was the left side of the back end and he used still bolts and they were rusted through they would i had to cut them off with a grinder and i just but the seam came off i used the same system i did on the right side and i puddled it there puddling the brazing alloy really works very very well it's awesome and so i pretty much entirely like i brazed the entire back seam of the boat and got it re-welded together i mean i put silicone you know marine sealant over in the back just to make sure there's anything else i did not grind over the brazing alloy because that's really bad. You just leave it like that. You can kind of 
sh you know, sand off the rough edges, but you want to just leave the brazing all the way like that. And ultimately, the brazing in conjunctions with the nuts and the bolts and the angled aluminum brackets are going to work really well. Ultimately, this was a huge learning experience for me. I have done a lot of complaining about how upset I was that I received the boat in this fashion. And that's partially my fault, you know. I, I, there was no way I could have actually told, told, I mean, the guy had the boat fiberglass. I chipped off all, he had, he had like a layer of fiberglass around the entire bottom of the boat. And at that point in time, I was just so happy I ran into a 1648 or 1646 John boat. I've been looking for a 16 foot John boat forever. Super hard to find out here in Arizona. It just, they're just hard. And so I kind of just jumped on it and I said, whatever is uh, broken with it, I'll fix it. And so yeah, I, I had to fix it. And it was a very, very long, tedious process that set me back quite a bit, you know, but ultimately I'm very glad that it happened because I was able to make a lot of pretty good videos that I think will be very helpful to the to um, the audience of the TV Nation community. And so I hope these videos help people over time with their John Boat projects. Because a lot of the projects you're going to get, these older John Boats, um, they're going to have problems. They're going to have leaking rivets. They're going to have broken seams. They're going to have cracks in the hole. And so it's important that we, like go together and we collaborate on how to uh, fix these take it my aluminum utilitex system it's going to be the most advanced system yet it's going to have two stage uh flood resistant hatching and i'm just not going to embellish it on it you're just going to get a really quick view it's going to have dual stage day boxes and they also have ports in there um they have plugs this will be my trolling motor mount i just have that piece in there just uh to size it it'll be it's going to be an adjustable pedal mount so I can choose the height of however high it's going to be, and it's it's in there. Everything welded together very, very seamlessly. It's a pretty rad system. I tried my best to not overframe. I tried to do everything as well as I could. These will be gasketed around the knife edge, and uh, the hatches are going to have like a loop over system to where they're going to sit here, and so it's going to be very, very hard for water to press through the knife edge. And then I have bleed ports where the, where the water is going to run off. I have a uh, sectioned out ports here because I have to I have to kind of drill through the very very top of the inserts to let it bleed out because if I had actually made these hatches as big as the actual inserts a deck would have been even longer and I was running out of deck space so this is kind of my solution for the inside runoffs and then I'm gonna have dome lights I'm gonna have my my actual hatches themselves are gonna be the most advanced hatches I'm gonna be able to put out and the whole system up here the day boxes are gonna get rid of the shallow stow and they're also going to allow me, they're insulated, and they're, they got drain pores, so that I can use them as live wells or coolers. So we're going to have multifunction uh, inserts. These are going to be how we compartment, compartmentalize everything. The standard wooden DIY, you know, like compartments that can leak through and deteriorate are gone. We're actually going to show you how to do these inserts. And I can't show you right now, but I molded these. If you can see this slight lip up here, I molded them in. And that's like uh, epoxy. I just wasn't too sure how uh, I wasn't too sure how like how well my remolding was going to hold up. So I reinforced it with epoxy. That's all that is that dripping stuff. So that's just uh, plastic bonding epoxy. And uh, the rest thing, I'm going to do a DIY live well. I'm um, slash bait well. It's not uh, now. Fire and Fishing has the best DIY live well out there on YouTube. He shows you how to make an actual tournament ready like 30 plus gallon live well that you're gonna use for bass fishing tournaments. Like I'm gonna show you how to do a really quick standard DIY bait well. I don't tournament fish out here. I just do it for the fun of it because it's something I love aside from boat building. But I'm gonna show you how to do a really, really simple one that's that's way easier and way less tedious, but uh, it's also not as effective, but you can check it out. But this is what it is, guys. It's gonna come quick. I just already preserved all the wood, everything I gotta do. The compartments aren't completely hatched yet, but the top of it, and then I'll sh I'm gonna do a more in-depth wood preservation video also. A lot of good stuff is coming. Stay good out there, TV Nation. I'll be back.